Hello everyone. Today I'm sharing with you a new pattern release from Itch to Stitch. I'm Sharon. Welcome to my channel, a channel all about sewing. The new Itch to Stitch top that I'm talking about is the Seychelles top that was released on March 23rd. I have two of them right here. This is an easy to sew pull over top. It has a short sleeve and a long sleeve version. You can see I did two short sleeve versions. Let me tell you some of the details about this great little top. This PDF pattern is available in sizes 00 through 40, and it has multi-cup sizes A through double D. As part of the tester group, I sewed two versions, and both of mine are in 8D. I will share lots of photos with you so you can see how it looks. There are more than 70 pattern tester photos for this one. I will link that in the description below so you can get a really good idea of what this looks like on a variety of different body shapes. The top does come with the option for a long sleeve and a short sleeve version. I sewed two short sleeves because we're going into the summer months here and short sleeves are what I need at the moment. One of the things that I absolutely adore about this top is the shoulder. It's designed to be slightly narrower. That means if you have a broad shoulder or a narrow shoulder, this is gonna work for you. And the fullness on the short sleeve is created with two box pleats. The fullness on the long sleeve is a traditional gathering. It's also gathered at the wrist with a very narrow band and no button holes. It's a button with a little loop closure. Gotta love that, right? No zippers, no button holes. The pattern is rated for beginners. And I do want to point out that the V-neck, that's cut on a bias. You want to be careful when you're sewing that. You do not accidentally distort that. I like to do a stay stitch along a V-neck. You could also use an iron-on stay tape that is on the wrong side of the fabric, of course. When I stay stitch, I don't go down and up. I start here and go up and here and go up. It just keeps the fabric even. I don't accidentally distort one direction or the other. The other thing I like to do when I am sewing a V-neck is I very carefully mark the center of the garment. You can do that with chalk, with thread tracing, with a pin, whatever works for you. And then I also measure and mark my seam line with chalk. That way I know I'm getting that perfect point for the V. What you don't want to do is all that work to sew your v-neck and then realize it's over here or it's over here or it's just a quarter of an inch off and i only say that because i have done that multiple times in the past so that's just a tip that i do when i'm sewing a v-neck this does have a wide facing on it and you can see that it is top stitched that's a design detail now how fun would this be instead of top stitching with your machine you did some hand stitching or tacked it in place with little embroidery French dots, something very decorative. There's a lot you can do with this pattern. It's fairly basic, but the sleeves are really the star of this one. On the black and pink one, I use that technique where you apply the interfacing and finish the edges all in one step. I have a video tutorial that I'll link above if you're not familiar with that, and I'll just quickly show you the steps. For the sleeve and the bottom hem, it's one and a quarter inch, so it's a nice deep hem. And it's simply stitched in place with your sewing machine. Easy peasy. Now the back has a center back seam. You might be tempted to take that back piece and lay it on the fold, which you certainly could if you wanted to. But I will tell you, there's a very subtle shaping to the center back seam, and I would recommend that you do not do that. Of course, depending on the fabric that you've chosen, especially if you have a large print that you don't want to break up, then you might want to do it on the fold and give up a little bit of that shaping. Let's talk about the fabric recommendations. This is designed for light to medium weight woven fabrics with no stretch, such as linen, linen blend, rayon chalet, charmeuse, lawn, chambray, poplin, sateen, and voil, which again, I used cotton voil for this one. Now, 
If you've been following my blog or following my YouTube channel or Instagram, you know that sometimes I deviate from fabric recommendations. <laughs> Let me preface that by saying when I am testing a pattern, I use recommended fabric and I follow the instructions. Once I was done with my tester version, I thought about sewing a long sleeve version out of a charmeuse. I don't need long sleeves right now. We're going into summer weather. It's getting rather warm. I need short sleeves. And I remembered this cotton metallic twill that I had purchased from Emma One Sock about, let's see, 2017, so four years ago. It was one of those roll ends pieces that she lists on her website at a discounted price. My original thought when I purchased it was to use it for a faux leather slash metallic bomber jacket or moto jacket. Well, that obviously didn't happen. But because this top is almost a scrap buster, depending on the size you use, fabric requirements range from about one and eighth yards to I think two and an eighth yards. So that very small size to the larger size. So it's almost a scrap buster. I just had one and an eighth yards and I was able to cut out every pattern piece in the size that I sewed. I figured if I didn't have quite enough fabric, I could always make it shorter or I could do a contrast facing inside. So I was very happy to see that I had enough fabric. Now, this fabric ravels. You look at it and it falls apart. So I was thinking, what am I going to do to keep it from not raveling after it's been sewn? Well, I remembered years ago, probably 90s, I had a designer Vogue jacket I had sewn that called for interfacing with a very light interfacing every piece, almost acting as an inner lining, I guess. So I took that thought to this. I did not end up interfacing the entire pattern pieces. I thought about it and I tested it first. And I'm glad that I did because it really changed the hand of the fabric and made it much stiffer than I wanted. What I did do is I added strips of interfacing along every single seam allowance along the where I stitched the darts and also up here where the pleats are. Anywhere that I thought there might be stress on the garment, I just added that little bit of interfacing thinking it would help secure those seams. I finished all those seams then with my serger. I paired the metallic top with jeans and open toe heels, thinking that this would work really well if my husband and I went to dinner in town. It would work just as well with jeans and flats. If you think you can't wear metallics during the daytime, think again. I think the design of this top and the fabric isn't so in your face metallic that I can get away with wearing it during the day also. As with any new itch to stitch pattern release, the pattern is on sale for one week after the release date. And if you choose to purchase this pattern, I would greatly appreciate it if you would use my affiliate link, which is in the description below. All that means is you're helping to support this channel so I can continue to bring you content and you don't pay any extra for using my affiliate link and I get a very small commission for doing so. I would love to know if you think this is something that you would sew and I really would love to see it if you do sew one. So be sure to tag me or mention it in the comments below. If you found this video entertaining or helpful, thumbs up, please. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. Happy sewing.